Hi everybody, welcome to Raya's tie-dye. So we have a special tapestry edition this time and we're calling it Hearts for Healthcare Workers because we have a ton of people who do this for a living and they have been doing this for a living, but now it's an even dire time, I guess, right now. So these people are <laughs> These people are sacrificing their home lives, they're sacrificing their time, they're leaving their their hometowns to go to, say, New York City or any other big city, just Detroit, um, New Orleans is getting hit pretty hard. So all these people are heroes. We'll just call them what they are, heroes. So... In honor of the heroes, we are doing a 58 inch by 58 inch tapestry and it's gonna be the blue hearts for healthcare workers in my own version. And when I'm done with this, I am gonna look into donating this to a hospital. Just maybe they can put it in their break room and it will bring them some happiness and just show them that they're very important. <laughs> So we are going to do hearts, a lot of hearts. So a heart in the middle, um, we're going to make the corners hearts and we're even going to try to do a little red hospital sign in the center of the heart. And we're using like four different colors. I haven't decided which ones yet, but mostly robin's egg blue for the big heart in the middle because I feel like that makes it look like it glows, which is this blue right here. And this is also, just in case you didn't notice, my rainbow tapestry. So this is also to spread happiness. So if you haven't seen that video yet, I will put that video right here. And if you want to check that out, you can click on it right there. Got it? <laughs> All right, let's get started. All right, so this is the 58 inch by 58 inch tap tapestry laid flat. And then all we're going to do for this one is we're going to fold it in half. Might be easier to grab both corners, shake it out. Burn myself on the light. <laughs> Make sure your edges are lined up, get your wrinkles out. So I got most of my wrinkles out. This is very wrinkly, but what I mean is no big wrinkles, nothing underneath. So I have the center fold on this side and I have the two ends on this side. And I'm going to get my washable marker. Now this is the heart part. So I have the tip uh, or the top, I should say, of the tapestry on this end. And I only have about two and a half, three inches left on the bottom that's hanging over the table. So we're going to eyeball this, find the center, and we're going to do a really big heart. So I want the heart to be about, I want it from here to about here. So it's going to be a pretty big heart. So with a washable marker, I'm going to start up top and you're going to do half of a heart. Make sure it's a good arch because if you do it too shallow, it's not really going to look like a heart. It's going to look like a kind of a triangle. So make a good arch and a big one. Come out, make it make it pretty wide. And then start curving down and make a really good, really good point at the bottom. Straight 
straighten this part out a little bit. There we go. All right, so that is that heart. But now we're going to do the hospital symbol in the middle. So we're going to want half of that. So it's just basically like a, a plus sign. So we're going to do right here. Try to make it even in the center. Do half. Come down straight. Come out straight. Go down straight. Go across straight again. And then down straight. And over straight. Okay, so there's that. And then the last thing we're going to draw, just to get our drawing done, is the center or the corners we're going to make into a heart. So it already has the bottom of a heart shape. So we're going to pretend that we want to make a heart. So we're going to come up and curve the top of a heart. So it makes a heart. And then we're going to do the same thing down in this corner. So we're going to arch up, make a good point. Come back up and come down. And then we're ready for our sinew. All right, now that I'm sitting here and kind of looking at my cross, I think this needs to be a little fatter because this is gonna be pretty fat. It's gonna be like that. So we're just going to open this up a little bit. Make this fat too. And I'm gonna come out just a tad. So now when you open this, it should be the same thickness about. So that disregard this middle lines here. There's Zoe. <laughs> Don't mind these center or this middle line. We're going to go with the outside line here. So now I got my sinew, my scissors. And what we're going to start with first is this cross. So I'm going to turn this towards me. So I turn the tapestry towards me with the cross facing towards me because I'm going to start in the middle and you want to start in the middle because this cross is actually on the inside of this heart. So if you do the heart first and then try to do the cross, you're not going to really be able to fold the cross easily. So we're going to do this one first and then the heart and then we'll do the outside hearts. So we're just going to pleat fold. So grab it little by little. And you're going to have to turn these at the sharp points and keep pleat folding, making sure your lines are matching up. Turn again for the center cross part. I'm not doing this very thick either. It's probably a quarter of an inch. So it's going to be a little fold. I didn't want to do too much because if you do it too thick, then you're going to lose a lot of your shape if it's too thick. So 
So now we're pleat folding the outside of the, the cross that sticks out, the part that sticks out. Now we're at the corner and turn, try to turn it again. There's a lot of points on this one. And then we're turning to the point, the part of that is at the very top. So we're gonna come all the way up and then go over and then that one is, once we tie it, that one will be tied. And then we can move on to the heart. All right, so that is gonna be our cross. And you can see that was the center line that I told you to disregard, but the rest of it is matching up really well. So normally I would have this already tied, but I did not do that this time. So if you have not seen how to do a slip knot real quick, I will show you again. So I have the end of the sinew on the bottom of my hand, but I'm gonna use two fingers and it's gonna come <clears throat> over the top and then just with the two fingers grab the very inside of the sinew and pull that loop over and it'll make kind of a knot and you can pull it wherever you want. So you'll just have more string on the end if you just pull it, but you can tighten it, loosen it. It won't come undone unless you pull too much, too little. So that is the slip knot. So we're just gonna slide this. The table is nice and smooth, so you can slide it under the tapestry without it getting messed up and then you can just line up your sinew with your marker make sure the bottom lines up with the top and then pull that just tight enough to hold it and then you can wrap this back around so you don't have to pull across the room put your hand down so you're holding it pretty good in there and it's not going to bunch up on you. Pull it. Don't pull it too hard because if you start noticing this little guy getting too small, it's going to come right undone. You'll have to redo your slip knot. So then you're going to wrap this around matching up with the first sinew line because if you don't ma match up, you're going to have a couple random lines in there. And then pull again till it's super tight. And then we're going to cut this guy really short because you don't need that one. And then we're going to leave room on that one because that's where you will pull it from. And now we can move on to the heart. And I'm going to start at the top of the heart, which is right here. We're going to pleat fold that whole thing. The heart is normally pretty easy to pleat fold. There's no points where you have to turn sharp or anything like that. So start at your point. I wouldn't make it too big. Like I said, if you pull too much fabric, you're going to lose your shape. Just make sure your lines match up and move the tapestry with you so that it's a lot easier for you to grab. Alright, so there is our line for the heart, if you can see past my hand, matched up pretty well. 
So this, because this tapestry is damp, it should semi stay there because I did not do the slip knot ahead of time again. So we're gonna make this one pretty big because we gotta get over all of this fabric. We're gonna try to slide this under without catching on stuff and ruining our line that we folded so perfectly. Make sure this is all lined up the way you want it to. Make sure the sinew is lined up underneath and on top. And then pull just enough to hold your fabric. And then if you need to adjust it or move it in any way, you definitely can. And then wrap this back up so you're not straining to pull it and then put your palm on it pull it tight and then we're gonna wrap it around three times again and pull tight <laughs> and this tail here cut that off and leave room on this side. All right, and then we have the corners to do and then we'll be ready to dye. So make sure your corners are as lined up as you can get them. Make sure that because you move the tapestry so much that you don't have any wrinkles in there again. And we'll start from this side. And this, this right here is a little bit thicker than the rest of the tapestry. So you might have to make this fold a little bigger than those ones just because of how thick that is. So I'm gonna push it up with my thumb and then start pleat folding. Try to match up the height of that first one. Okay, so that is gonna be our heart in the top corner. And then pretty much repeat your step for the last two times with your sinew. Open that up so you don't have any problems. Slide it underneath, pull this back in, and line it up. And then we have the one last corner on this side. We have moved the tapestry quite a bit, so we want to make sure that's lined up too. 
I would tuck that tag in there. This time, I am gonna make sure that I do the slip knot first, save some time and some energy. And then we'll start on this side again. Washable markers, sinew, scissors, dye, any of that stuff. Everything I use is in the description below. Uh, there are links in there that should take you to available products. And if you happen to want to look and you're curious to see what I have available, I do have an Etsy shop. The link is in the channel art and in the description below as well. And I have lots of cool stuff on there. I have an East the Peeps Easter Bunny is on there. Every one of my tapestries is on there. All right, one more fold. There we go. There's the other one. Now I can hold it, line up your line and your sinew, oh, see that's what I gotta do, I gotta pull. So now that messed up a little bit at the end, so I'm gonna fix it, move my sinew over so it's on the line. Make sure the bottom is lined up with my line too, and then pull it again. Make sure that's lined up the way that you want it. And then pull tight. So the good thing about that one, when, when that happened, is it did not undo my slip knot because I wrapped it around three times already. So all it did was pull the original knot back to the other side. So that is a good thing. It's the first time you pull it that you don't want to pull it too hard. Now for the rest of the tapestry, because there's a lot of fabric here, we are going to scrunch it all together and bound it up with some rubber bands. Um, if you try to dye this without scrunching it or putting rubber bands in it, it's gonna not look right. So, and that's a lot of dye you would probably use to have to cover all of this. So we're going to grab our rubber bands. I'm gonna get the big ones out, my big green ones. And then I normally start from the center. So I'm gonna start from the center. Just start scrunching your fabric in with your fingers. You might have to move things the way you want them. So I don't want this super close to my hearts. So I'm gonna flip this around and pull more fabric get it all in there so now i have a lot of fabric in one pile now the problem hopefully we don't have is that this is a lot of fabric and it's normally when you scrunch something it, it shrinks it down down a lot now when we try to put these rubber bands on i have stretched these out quite a bit so hopefully it's not gonna bunch up all of our fabric together so we're gonna try that and see what it looks like 
Oh, look at that. That worked. But if they're not stretched out rubber bands, they probably will bunch up a little bit. So try to pick your rubber bands that you use all the time or try to stretch them out a little bit before you use them. Add a couple more rubber bands just to make sure that it's going to be secure when you pick it up. You got to be very careful when you pick it up because it might just fold under itself, the center part. These are secure. You don't have to worry about these. Unless you're like playing with it and you undo a bunch of it, then it's going to look weird. But the center part, if you pick it up and you don't have enough rubber bands, it's going to flip right into itself. That wouldn't be good because then you'll have to redo it. Alright, so that is our tapestry ready for dye. So these are the corner hearts. This is the big heart in the middle, and this is going to be the hospital cross in the very center of this heart, and then a crumple for the background. So you just want to make sure you're picking colors that aren't going to mix and make brown. Um, complementary colors if you can too, but because it's blue hearts for healthcare workers, and we're going to do the robin's egg blue because I feel like that's a good blue to make it pop and look like it's kind of glowing. Like that's why I really love that blue because it looks like it's glowing. So that's what we're gonna do for the hearts. All three of them are gonna be robin's egg blue. Definitely doing Chinese red for the cross in the middle. And then I am thinking teal and purple for the background, but I don't know. It'll be a surprise to both of us. All right, everybody, so we're ready for the dyeing process. So we hit our colors today are red for the cross, robin's egg blue for the three hearts, and then we're gonna do a teal on this side, and then when we flip it over, we're gonna do red and violet on the other side, just to do a crumple highlight effect. So, Robin's egg blue for the hearts, Chinese red for the cross, teal and purple. Teal on one side, purple on the other side. So this is going to get speeded up, but you it won't be too fast where you can't follow along. Okay, so this is all dyed then. We have the Chinese red, 
for the cross, the robin's egg blue for all three of the hearts. There's teal on the bottom side, and this is red violet, which is purple. So now we're gonna let this sit for 24 hours. We're not gonna touch it. We're gonna leave it alone. And then after the 24 hours is up, we're gonna rinse uh, with cold water in the sink until the water runs clear. And then after that, we can wring it out and do our awesome reveal for these awesome people that are risking their lives for everybody. So um, I can't wait for the reveal. And while we're waiting that 24 hours, I will be looking into donating this to a hospital. Um, hopefully we can get this somewhere where it will bring somebody a bright day and a smile. All right, so it's reveal time. And while I'm taking off my millions of rubber bands, we're going to tell you again, if you are a healthcare worker, um, or if you know a healthcare worker, make sure they get to see this video because I want to say thank you. You guys, if there was ever a real superhero, I would say it would be you. So just thank you for what you're doing and thank you for sacrificing your time and your, your health for saving our friends and family all over the world. So... Like I said, this, when I dyed this, I, sorry, I can't talk today. Can't do it. I'm hot. Ugh, I'm stuck in the house. So, Robin's Egg Blue, Chinese Red, Teal, and Red Violet for the background. So, I, I'm going to do this part last because this is the, this is the awesome part. But, it didn't take much to dye this it didn't I don't think I oversaturated it or anything but I got some white in my background which I think is gonna look really cool like I said I can't talk today so I'm gonna go back to the healthcare heroes and say thank you again and you guys are amazing I have a couple people in my family that are healthcare heroes um, our cases aren't as bad around here as they are in New York City or in Detroit or New Orleans. But they are definitely going and working every single day, no matter what. They put, put their families at risk just to help other people. So it's very appreciated and we, we love you guys. Almost! Look at this! Let's see this Alright, are we ready? I think this is the top, so let's do that. Ooh, that turned out so good! That looks awesome! If you want to say thank you, if there's any healthcare workers on, um, subscribe to me. Or if you want to share it, share it away. Also, comment thank you to everybody that's putting their lives at risk. Make sure you check this out. I'm going to post this on my Facebook page. And I'm going to try to post it everywhere. My Instagram. Um, try to share it to healthcare groups and sites. And spread a little happiness and let everybody know that they do matter and they're not alone. Thank you for watching.